Well, welcome back, guys. Today we're going to look at the law of sines. The law of sines is going to be one of two laws that we're going to look at, law of sines and law of cosines, that are going to help us solve for side lengths and angles in triangles. Here's how the law of sines works. It's going to be a ratio. Sine A over A is equal to sine of angle B over side length B. So this is an angle, uppercase angle, so this is a throwback to geometry, over side length A is equal to sine of big C, which is the angle, over C. A couple of keys to the law of sines. We're looking for, we need a full ratio. Okay, we need a full ratio, meaning we need an angle and a side, and its opposite side. So we need one that's, that's full. And the case is where we can use it. Okay, we can use it when we have angle, angle, side. We can use it when we have angle, side, angle. And we can use it when we have side, side, angle, although side, side, angle is going to be tricky because this is going to be called the ambiguous case. Okay, the ambiguous case. And I'm going to put a little question mark by that because we're going to leave that ambiguous. We'll talk about that in class. What we're going to look at right now is we're going to look at a couple of examples where we can use it, and we don't have this ambiguous case. And so let's draw a triangle here. In this example, we're going to solve a triangle ABC given that angle A is 36. So this is 36. Angle B is 48. And A is 8. Well, it's important to remember that in triangles, when we set them up, the little letter, lowercase letter, is opposite of its angle. So side B is opposite of angle B, side C is opposite of angle C. And so if A is equal to 8, what are we trying to do? We're trying to solve the triangle. What does that mean? It means three sides, three angles. I like to lay them out. The measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle C equals A equals B equals and C equals. So what have we got here? Measure of angle A is 36. So I need these six pieces. Measure of angle B is 48. Uh, and A is 8. So right now I have three. I need six. There's some that are easier to solve than others. And hopefully you're recognizing, hey, you know, I've got these two angles. So all I have to do is subtract to get that third angle. So I'll do 180 uh, minus 36 minus 48 is equal to, I've got 96 degrees left, and so I'm on my way. So what am I going to use to solve for these other two pieces? Can't use Pythagorean theorem because it's not a right triangle. So I'm thinking maybe I'll use the law of sines. Well, well, do I have the case where I can use the law of sines? Let's check it out. I have um, angle and an angle and an unincluded side. So I don't have the one uh, bet between the, the angles. So I really actually have Angle, angle, side. Is that one of the cases where I can use it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to use the law of sines. Well, let's check out the law of sines because I need a full ratio, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Let's just set up the whole thing. Sine of the angle A is 36 <coughs> degrees. A is 8 equals the sine of 48 degrees over B, which I don't have, is equal to the sine of... 96 over C, which I don't have. Here is that full ratio. You see it? This is what I call the full ratio, which means now I can pick two of these, these fractions and set them equal to each other and solve like a proportion. Here's what I mean. I can say sine 36 over 8 equals sine of 48 over B. One unknown three knowns. So when I cross multiply, so I've got B sine 36 equals 8 sine 48. I divide by sine 36. Divide by sine 36. So B is equal to 8 sine 48 over sine 36. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Uh, so Put it into my calculator. Couple of notes. You gotta be in, in degree mode here because all of these are degrees. So B is gonna be 10.11. Now 
I've got this value. It's a rounded value. So when I go to do the law of sines again, I need to use my original full ratio that has the unrounded values. So now we're going to use our full one and our one with our C as our unknown. So sine 36 over 8 equals sine 96 over C. So C sine 36, 8, sine 96. Divide by sine 36. So C is equal to 8 sine 96 over sine 36. And again, degree mode because we're dealing in all degrees here. And so my C is equal to 13.54. There it is. The key to using this one, check to see if it was even possible. Angle, angle, side. Also, check to see that I had a full ratio. It's a good thing. Got all six pieces. Three sides, three angles. When you try this next one on your own, go ahead and pause it. Try to work it out. And after you do that, turn the video back on, check your answers. Okay? All right, we're back from the pause. A, B, C, 40 degrees, 30 degrees. In my head, I'm thinking that's 70, so my C has got to be 110. And my B is 10. I still need C. I still need A. So I know, I know when I'm laying these things out, measure of angle A is 40. Uh, the measure of angle B is 30. Measure of angle C is 110, A unknown, B is 10, C is unknown. Okay, so now I'm looking to see, is this something where I can use this? I can use the law of sine. I have angle, angle, side, so we're good. Set up my couple of ratios. So I'm going to use my full one. I see that this one's going to be my full one here, right? So I'm going to have sine of 30 over 10 equals sine of 40 over A. Also, sine of 30, again, using my full one, is equal to sine of 110 over C. Cross multiply and divide. So cross multiply, 10 sine 40 over sine 30 equals A. Cross multiply and divide. So my A is going to be equal to 12.9. Again, over here, we're going to cross multiply and divide. So I cross multiply 10 sine 110. And that's a little shortcut, right? Because ultimately I'd have 10 sine 110 is equal to C sine 30. But if I cross multiply and divide by the third one, it's the same as saying this here. Just a little review. So C is equal to 18.8 in that one, okay? So then I end up finding all three angles, all three sides, and I've got that worked out where I used the law of sines because I had it full ratio. I knew it was angle, angle, side, so it was possible. So what are we gonna do in class? We're gonna talk about that ambiguous case. What happens? Why is it like that? I'm leaving it ambiguous until that time. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.